A few years ago, I was presenting a poster over Zoom. In two and a half hours, five people stopped by, including one bounce in one second. I did the math to match the visibility of a single social media post. I will have to stand by that poster for 31 years. I'll be a grumpy old guy like this. That moment got me thinking about content creation. To researchers, content creator almost feels like a dirty word, probably because our timelines are flooded with posts like this by AI influencers. But if you really think about it, academic research is content creation. So I put together a comparison. It breaks down the key differences. What we long for, how we measure performance, what are we scared of, and how are we judged. But fundamentally, researchers and content creators are more alike than you think. We both believe that attention is all you need, and we both aim for impact. Because nobody wants to be the person at a party like this. They don't know I have good papers. In this talk, I want to share what I learned from starting as a small content creator myself. How we need to tell a story, make a video, and perhaps the hardest of all, overcome the mental barrier to show your work. Let's start with story. Storytelling is universal. It's how we connect, teach, remember, and inspire. But what makes a good story? In The Three Little Pigs, if we just say that the pigs build three houses, it's pretty boring, right? We need to bend the attention line and add basic story elements. We start with context, then introduce a conflict, follow with rising actions and tensions, and finally the climax, when the pigs outsmart the big bad wolf. Then comes resolution, where the state of the characters change. But how do we make sure our story flows? Here's a simple trick I always use. Replace and then with but or therefore. We can take these beats, which are basically the beats of your outline. And if the words and then belong between those beats, you're f***ed, basically. You got, you got something pretty boring. What should happen between every beat that you've written down is either the word therefore or but, right? So, so what I'm saying is that you come up with an idea and it's like, okay, this happens, right? And then this happens. No, 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 it should be this happens and therefore this happens. But this happens, therefore this happens. And that, as soon as we are able to, and literally sometimes we'll, we'll write it out to make sure we're doing it, uh, we'll, we'll have our beats and we'll say, okay, this happened, but then this happens, and that affects this, and that does to that, and right. that's why you get a show that feels like, okay, this to that, to this to that, but this, here's the complication, to that. Now you have a good story, but no one clicks, no one watches, and no one knows. That's where the title comes in. A good title sparks curiosity. Here is an example. I was teaching an undergrad computer vision class and made a video explaining La Prussian Pyramid. At first, I titled it, How La Prussian Pyramid Blending Works. Nobody watched the video. Two days later, I changed the title to How a 40-year-old trick solves seamless image blending. And suddenly it took off. If I were to teach in person, I would need to teach 450 times to reach that many people. But title are only half of the story. The thumbnail matters just as much. It needs to show a compelling visual summary of what the video is about. So take the time to craft it. A research paper has four parts. Title, abstract, introduction, and rest of paper. The advice from Don German is that we should spend equal time on four of these. Similarly, a video has four parts. Title, thumbnail, first 30 seconds, and rest of videos. We should spend equal time on these four as well. The first 30 seconds are particularly critical. That's when viewers decide, should I commit my time to this? If they leave, it won't matter how good the rest is. The rest of the video may as well be completely black. So how do you design a compelling hook? Here's a simple three-step formula. First, validate their expectation. Your first sentence in the video should assure people that this is what they came for. Second, disrupt the flow using contrast. This is where you use the word but or however. Third, twist and promise value. In summary, tell a story that keeps people engaged, makes them curious, and grab their attention. Make a video. When writing a paper, we're used to presenting ideas through a static PDF. But videos could be so much more effective. Let me show you. Can you see what's in this image? Probably not, 
It's just noise. How about now? As a researcher, we should take advantage of the temporal dimension in video to communicate our ideas more effectively. So what can you use videos for? First, videos are great for visualizing changes. And change comes in many forms, the results of different methods. The input and output of your work. or multiple outcomes your message produces. So before you put all these videos side by side, like what you would do in a paper, Think about how you can have a better trade-off between space and time. Second, videos are fantastic for building correspondence over time. They let you explain ideas more smoothly and naturally. Third, the narrative in your videos create dynamics. Here's the practical tricks I use when writing my scripts. This sentence has five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. It's like a stock record. The ear demands some variety. Now listen. I vary the sentence length and I create music. Music. The writing sings. It has a pleasant rhythm, a lit, a harmony. I use short sentences. And I use sentences of median length. And sometimes when I'm certain the reader is rested, I will engage him with a sentence of considerable length. A sentence that burns with energy and builds with all the interpose of a crescendo, the roll of the drums, and the crash of the cymbals. Sounds that say, listen to this, this is important. So write with a combination of short, medium, and long sentences. Create a sound that pleases readers' ear. Don't just write words, write music. In summary, videos are great because they help visualize change, build temporal correspondence, and create dynamics. Finally, I want to discuss the mental barrier of putting yourself out there. Many of us struggle with imposter syndrome, feeling we are not good enough. This is an actual photo of me at this conference, surrounded by amazing researchers and speakers. Sometimes it's easy to feel overwhelmed. Here is some advice I found helpful. First, nobody cares about you. There's a psychological concept called the spotlight effect. It means that we tend to overestimate how much others pay attention to us. We get scared that people are judging every move we make. But in reality, everyone is worrying about themselves. Knowing this is liberating. It gives me the freedom to try and experiment. Second, your first videos will suck. And that's okay. Your first video is not going to get views, period. It's not. Your first 10 are not going to get views. I can very confidently say that. All you need to do, this applies to people who have dreams of being a YouTuber, is make 100 videos and improve something every time. Do that. And then on your 101st video, we'll start talking. Give yourself the permission to suck. Every time you practice, you get better. Third, be the guy, not the guru. Many hold back from sharing because they feel that they have to be the ultimate expert. But you don't have to be a guru. Just imagine you are a guide, sharing your journey with others. You can teach what you know, what you just learned, what confused you yesterday, what excites you today, what you are still figuring out. With this mindset, I found the freedom to learn and share even on topics I'm not an expert. Finally, putting yourself out there takes courage. Yes, sometimes you'll get mean comments and even attacks. But most people will cheer you on and you'll grow so much along the way. So in summary, to overcome the mental barrier, realize no one is watching. Give yourself permission to suck. Be the guy, not the guru, and be vulnerable. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.